welcome thieves, pilferers, robbers, and larcenists. So you want to steal the entire city? Well, you're going to have to arm yourself with a lot of information. My name is Ali Straza, and in this video we're going to talk about Chapter 4 and everything you need to know to distract the creepy crawlies of the underbelly and give your partner in crime, Blastmaster Boom, enough time to take off with the city. <laughs> like most of the solo adventures and the previous chapters, you will start with 10 cards and add to it with each monster you defeat. Friendly bartender Bob does make an appearance again in Chapter 4 as he gives you special cards to let you augment your deck in different ways throughout the run. Chapter 4 of the Dollar Run Heist has a special twist in that all health and attack stats are swapped for every minion throughout the entire run. Because Warrior and Druid were the two classes that were unlocked this week, I chose to take down the chapter with those two classes, so this video might have a little bit more of a focus on them, however I think that all classes are viable. Something to note about Shaman though, if you choose to pick Shaman for chapter 4, I would stay away from the basic hero power, because your spell power totem, your taunt totem, and your healing totem all die immediately due to the health and attack swap. So let's talk about some of the passives and treasures that you should be on the lookout for during the heist. As far as passives go, I think mana cheating is definitely the most helpful way to help beat the bosses, and there are a lot of different options to mana cheat. Robes of Gaudiness is an amazing cost reduction, and I think most people can agree it is the best passive that you can get. Just make sure that you're picking up a lot of high cost minions to mitigate the downside of only being able to play two minions a turn. Pick up a 7 drop, there's your turn 3. It's pretty insane and it definitely will yield uh, the best results uh, for mana cheating. Emerald Goggles and Expedite both help tremendously, especially with the later bosses as they start with extra mana. On the treasure side of things, there are many good cards, but these are some of my favorites. I really like Case Study, I think it's both powerful and consistent due to the strength of the quest completion cards, and the fact that it is a discover mechanic rather than something random gives you a little bit more control over the situation, which is why I think it's powerful. The Muscle can be a huge tempo swing and card advantage, so he's really, really strong. Big Boomba and the Candles are some of the best board wipes I've ever seen to have been made for a format like this, so those are definitely good ones to pick up. As for Simeon Sphere and Anoa Horn, I found that they're strong and impactful for their mana cost and can help you control the board in different ways. So to go through the treasures I like real quick, I like Case Study, Super Simeon Sphere, The Muscle, Elder Togawag, Anoa Horn, The Candles, and Big Boomba. As for the passives, Rocket Backpacks, Rush is amazing, Stargazing, the Hero Pyre costing one can be wonderful too, Wondrous Wisdom Ball, the advice is pretty good on average so don't be scared in picking him up, uh, Emerald Goggles, uh, shout out to Elixir of Vim, those two are a great combo, uh, Robes of Gaudiness, I th like I said, best passive in the game I think, and also Expedite, Mana Cheating by one is also very very powerful. So those are some of my favorite passives and treasures. Let me know what some of your favorites are as well. My warrior run was super fun, so I hope you guys enjoy seeing some of the bits and pieces of it. Uh, it was a dragon deck with double battle cries with battle totem. So I had really fun moments like getting a uh, double Emerus off, buffing everything in the deck twice, um, or Marin the Fox, uh, especially because it, I got two treasures and they both instantly were killed because of the attack and health swap. So there were a lot of little fun things that happened in this warrior run, and it was dragon, so I was super happy about that. My heroic druid run was pretty fun as well. That's the other final boss fight that you'll see in this video. Uh, I was pretty committed to wanting to beat uh, heroic with druid, as it was one of the, cl uh, the classes that was released this week, like I said earlier. Uh, it took me a little while, as I think druid's definitely one of the weaker classes to fight bosses with um, in the dollar on heist, but I finally did it, and it's probably because of robes of gaudiness. I had, so I had the robes of gaudiness, the battle totem, uh, the muscle, and also master scheme. So all of that made for a really powerful deck um, that I just completely, you know, ran over Madame Goya at the end there. For my winning warrior heroic run, I had summoning scepter, battle totem, the candles, 
and case study. And Madame Goya is the final boss for chapter four, where she essentially turns your cards in your hand into extortion cards, where you have to pay two mana, that's two mana spell, to get your cards back to your hand. So with Madame Goya, you need to sort of weigh when the opportune moment is to get your uh, minions back to your hand by paying the two mana. She plays a lot of uh, minions that take advantage of the fact that you're playing spells. So like Gluttonous Trog or the Burly Rockjaw Trog, they you know either buff attack when you play a spell or get plus one plus one or Burgly Bully, that kind of stuff. So it's generally a good idea to clear those minions before you're paying the mana spell um, to get your minions back to your hand. One thing that worked out really well for me in the final boss against Madame Goya was the Muscles Battle Cries triggered twice, so I got six cards to my hand, which really helped mitigate um, the fact that a lot of them were getting uh, turned into extortion cards. So I wasn't depleted too much on my resources because I was able to get so much value from the double muscle effect, keeping a large um, selection of cards in my hand. Rocket Backpacks giving all your minions rush is another great way to keep firm control over the board. Elder Tagawag plays a similar removal role, but some games you get to play him multiple times. So those were my uh, two heroic boss fights, and I hope you guys enjoy. Ooh. Yeezy breezy beautiful cover girl. An Emerus Pog. All right, we definitely play an Emerus. Double Emerus. Oh my god! Oh my god! It's a 48-16 Ysera! <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, hold on a minute. Um, okay. What's the coolest play we can do here? Okay, because we obviously could like trade... Oh man, what could we do? We could trade here. No, that doesn't work actually. We could throw this in. Hit here, then those clear. I could also just trade here, hit here, and go Ysera. Power before me! Oh my god, I'm gonna be so sad if he clears my 48-16 Ysera. It's not good enough. What a board, guys. What a board. And you guys were debating the Dragon's Roar. But Dragon's Roar double Emerus. Oh, we got Marin. Let's do it for fun. One for all and all for me. Beloved Dub Dub. Yeah, so for those of you that haven't played this one before, basically what happens is like the reason why the giant rats are there is that if you were to like lethal damage him, he would replace, the hero gets replaced with the rats. So you have to kill the rats before you can kill him. But I don't think there was a lethal being able to kill. He gave the same treasures in the same order. This one's probably better, right? All right, Madame Goya. Replace a random card in your opponent's hand with an extortion. 
Mastermind, dear. Okay, I don't really know what that means, but we're gonna figure it out. Mr. Chu versus Madam Goya. Mr. Chu, you know the price for betraying me. It is sad for us to be in such All right, we're gonna keep that. circumstances. <laughs> oh no, wait. Unless um every turn. Oh don't no, stop. Oh I go first though. This is fine. Galvadon incoming. I'm so excited. I still think you play that turn one though. Item have a way of increasing price at the worst of times. Oh, you just have to pay for it? Oh, okay. Mm, well, that's a 5-3. It's gonna be a 7-3 soon, isn't the wheels it? In your head turn, yet Maybe we don't nothing. do anything. And we just throw it in. Or we don't have to. We could always just rush that in. Unless he's got a way Listen here. to buff it up. It's probably a free 2 damage space if he clears. Frog hungry. Okay, we need our candles. We'll pay what you owe. One way or another. Um Yeah, probably just throw that in. What does this do? Whenever your opponent casts a spell, it gets plus one plus one. Ugh. Trogs, I hate this boss already. Yeah, I hate this boss already too. This seems like pretty rough. Holy um, I guess the 5-3 is scarier? Must apply pressure. <sighs> because... I deal with criminals. You I actually feel like, okay, so this gets plus one, plus one, else. meaning that it might get harder to kill as time goes on, where, like, if we need to just rush that in there, we could do that. Man. Because I'm worried that this is going to get hit next turn and I'm not going to be able to kill something that comes out next turn. I know next turn I'm Militia the 3-3, but what I'm saying is what if it gets hit and then I need to start casting spells in order to get my shit back. I'm fast and furious! In your face! Alright, if, if he hits this, then we'll play this next turn. That is a price on that. Oh god. Okay. Well, I think we have to rush this thing down. Defend the gates to me. I am the Uker of Dukers. I A bit blood. Oh my god, can I please get my twin spell? Please, 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 please. This item has great meaning to you. I hope I Candles. Okay, Chilma is good cuz I have a dragon. Oh my god. No silence, no silence, come on. The invisible paw of the Oh my god, I got so lucky there. So lucky. But I had to I had to do it though. What is this? Whenever this attacks, give your opponent a coin. Oh, that's fine. I could just smack it. Uh, I could do return a Wrathy Weapon Smith to my hand, play the Arathi, and then smack that for six. Mm. I could always case study, play your extortions this turn before something bad happens. Perhaps you are not the fool I took you to be. I still have to play the Galvadon, though, guys. Like, I still, if I discover it, I still have to play him for five. I'm fairly confident of that. So it doesn't just, like, come into play um so i can sulfurous yeah i, I mean sulfurous would be cool pressure. but i might as well just play two of these right unless i get sulfurous in which i would go with that so let's do it great great i'm almost thinking we take amara because i'm a little bit worried about health here 15 That's raptors only... time warp hmm. i personally like amara I don't really want raptors in my deck. Or are they three? Do they draw a card or are they just three twos? Oh, they draw, they draw two? Oh, 
Oh, that's pretty good then. All right, that's kind of cool then. I'm gonna take six here though, guys. There'll be two threes. A little bit worried about that. Well, let's think about what we're doing next turn. If I get the Arathi back this turn, I could play it for four and smack that, and I really can't do anything else. I'm probably going to want to play this. I think we're going to get back the Bone Drake, I guess. Part of me actually just wants to armor up. Death, turn up traitor. Okay, well, I'm happy I played that. Think of this as an investment in our future relationship. We're gonna play in Nixia. You dare challenge the daughter of Deathwing? Yeah, I feel like this is like win more. I feel like the Amara is like safe, you know? The Amara actually lets us like the black market takes a modest cut. We get two coins, eight, nine, ten, meaning we could play two ten or two five fives here. So we're actually doing fine. We could play Bone Drake and Scale Bane. Just clear this. It's a little annoying that we're gonna be taking twelve, but I think we'll be fine there. You shall pay for your <laughs> Actually we could kill no. Mm. Actually, no, we should kill one of these then, rather than, because I actually kind of like the coins. The coins are nice. The wheels in your head turn, yet nothing. I should just trade, trade, and then. Last chance. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, I get two. Yeah, right, that's fine. One for all and all for me. Um, let's do this one. Attack. Okay, doing all right. Goddamn. I think we're good. We good, we good. But in, like, honestly, I mean, it shaped up that we didn't really need the, um, 
Carnassa, but oh my god, we're actually gonna draw too many cards. Uh oh, I forgot about that. My bad. Oh, um, sure. Okay. Okay. Too many cards incoming. What did we get? Curse Blade? Okay. This will draw us two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's fine. For the glory of glory of storm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Shiny. Too many. For the glory of Stormwind. For the glory of Stormwind. Voiclings. All right, we did it, guys. Pog. Chilma definitely did save me. That's so true. I would have definitely lost if I didn't top deck Chilma. For the glory of Stormwind. For the glory of Stormwind. Oh, yes! We did it. Yeah. Clap. And with Warrior, too. Your evil plan comes together. Deal one damage to a minion and give it plus two attack. Okay. Now, now I really want to try and get it with Druid, though. Gained 50 armor. Shuffle two explosives into your opponent's deck. Oh, okay, that's fun. Chill Maw Ass Saver for the next expansion. Bombs. The rat is harder than the panda. The rat is harder than the panda. All right, let's do, let's try and get it with Druid. All right. Oh, final, here we go. Okay, choose a friendly menu, replace all minions in your adventure deck with copies of the it. I don't know if that we need that. Deal one damage, deal draw one card, give one armor. That's probably really decent. Um, Mergatha, we already have a Mergatha. We already have a Mergatha. Or was that another run? No, we don't have a Mergatha. Hmm. It is a one mana three six. But I feel like this is just better because like we already have such good minions. Yeah, I feel like we just want this. And I think we just keep going big. I think this is the same exact options as last time. Weird, deja vu. Okay, um, yeah, I think we're just going that. I don't, three mana seven sevens, like, you know? Madam Goya runs the black market down here. Ma don't buy anything. Don't buy anything. Oh, she's the one that swaps things in your hand. With extortion cards, okay. Hopefully, we get go first here. Squeamlish versus Madame Goya. Madame Goya. I know who you are. I know what you've done. You are being fan of Squeamlish. Hi. This will cost four. I think. Um. I mean, it's a four and eight six. Like, why wouldn't I keep it? Because maybe I want a three drop. All right, let's look for something we can play on three, maybe. <clears throat> oh, that's that's pretty decent, actually. That's really good because this will make six cards go. Um... Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna play this and this. Fuck. Sure. Um, so hopefully she doesn't get this, and she did. 
I hope I do not drop it. Hmm. So whenever you cast a print, you get gain plus one attack. So we could earthen and trade and then just drop this. This brings back the muscle for two mana. What would master so next turn we could play this and the muscle because basically she's gonna get a six six cards from her battle cry and like that could just like get hit by her thing, which makes it better for us to have more cards in the hand. So. And I don't know if I want to have two cards in the hand if we're going to have six. So maybe we play this. Oh, wait, what is this again? Oh, I thought this was the Cthune thing. Um, divine Shield or plus three attack? Mm, kind of like Divine Shield, honestly. Mm. We can just do this gets attacked, but that's fine, and we can trade. Okay. That's fine. The black market takes a modest cut. We probably want to trade here first. We could just do this, but I think it's better to do this and the muscle. So let's trade here so it doesn't get attacked. Um... Return the muscle to the hand. Now we're gonna get six cards here. Here you go, boss. Can't play any of them, but that is okay. Okay, we got a tombsayer. Don't really need that. Nubian unraveler. It's whatever. Think of this as I What did it get? It got Phantom Freebooter. I don't even know what Phantom Freebooter was. Um. Okay. I think we can trade here, either probably go face and then play the bulldozer and the iron hide. I'll handle this. Yeah, this game is easy. Clap, man, when you've got this hero power ability. I guess the even the seven seven up allows us to potentially summon a five five, but I don't think it matters. Okay. Will pay what you owe, one way or another. And Dosta summons a beast from our hand. We have no beast except for Baku. So what we can do here is do this and play this. Overkill this. Summon Baku. Get Barnabas? Oh my god. I don't know if I've ever rolled over a final boss as hard as this. Okay. Um, trade here is overkill. Okay. Here. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's fine. Um... Okay, we've got seven times three is 21, 25. Not enough, but we're getting there. Um, you know? We honestly could just go face. We really could, but having too much fun. Death to that traitor. A bit blood for my tastes. Okay. But he does good work. Items have a way of increasing price at the worst of times. At this point, we just 
just go and face, fam. We just go and face. I am the Uger of Dukers. The invisible paw of the mark. This is the Yeah. And Undasta for lethal bog. Yes! I did it guys! <laughs> I finally beat Heroic with Druid. Praise be. It took a while. Druid I think is definitely one of the weaker classes for the Heroic content, that's for sure. Um, so I did have one other final boss for Druid. Um, but I, I lost. So, the robes of gaudiness, 100%. The rockets are ready. The city almost definitely won't explode and fall from the sky. Yes, Ro robes of gaudiness is 100% the best passive. A lot of people have been saying it. Definitely is. Completely rolled over all of those bosses. I think that was one of the fastest runs I think I've done. And it was Druid, so it feels amazing, man. I had a zero mana gruel. That was pretty fun. The battle cries triggering twice for this Tortolan Forager was insane. Because I and I had this in my opener every single turn. So, um yeah, that that was insane. I finally did it, guys. Beat heroic with druid. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you'd like to see more content from me, you can check out some of my stream highlights from Twitch over here. And if you'd like to get to know me a little bit more, maybe outside of gaming, you can check out my vlogs over here. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and thank you again for watching this video. Bye guys.